The final release of Battlefield 1 is almost upon us, but thankfully I've already had a chance to play a lot of the game and I wanted to share with you a look at some of the new maps, weapons, gadgets and overall impressions of the game. What I like, what I don't like and perhaps even things that I think could be changed to make the game a bit better. Let's just remember that Battlefield 4 didn't ship in a fantastic state but now the game is pretty good and Battlefield 1 is already way ahead in terms of stability and quality when it comes to the launch of the game so I think we've got the base for a brilliant game to get our teeth stuck into over the next couple of years. Let me just start with the obvious one first, how does it run on PC? We all know it's the first thing people want to talk about with a Battlefield game. Well I imagine that a lot of you will have played in the alpha and beta so you've already got the answer to this I think but if you don't it runs pretty well and it looks damn good when it's doing it. It's running on the latest version of the Frostbite engine and some of the detail and effects is just incredible. The cinematics that this game could produce, it's hard to even imagine and I can't wait. So far for me in the alpha and the beta and the final release of the game, it's been very stable. A lot of the bugs I happened to come across during the beta weren't present in the build that I played recently either. Now I'm not saying the game won't have any bugs, we just can't predict that with a game of this size and when hundreds of thousands of players get their hands on it, something usually breaks. It's a battlefield game, there's going to be bugs. But during the beta I noticed various bugs from animation glitches to vaulting problems which were probably the most annoying, but when I played the game in the latest build I didn't really encounter any of those problems at all. Like I say that doesn't mean the game is bug free, far from it, but so far I haven't encountered any game breaking and I'm really hopeful that when the game is released to everyone those nasty legacy bugs don't start rearing their heads again, I'm sure we'll see one or two of them, but I think DICE have managed to stamp most of them out. There are also some fantastic maps here. My personal favourite, well, that's a bit of a tough one. It's probably between Amiens and Argonne Forest. Amiens is based in the city of the same name in France and you play in and around these city streets. I absolutely love this map and I think that's because, number one, it's well designed and it's actually a good multiplayer map with different lanes to fight in. And number two, it's a map that instantly tells you that you're playing a world war game, or at least it does that for me. It's dark, grungy, there's burning buildings, destroyed buildings, plenty of destruction as well. The atmosphere in this particular map just made it for me. Not to mention the fact that it's a brilliant infantry map and you've really got to be careful in vehicles because there are so many buildings for enemies to hide in and shoot out of. And like I said, plenty of destruction too. And yes, I know it's a World War II movie, but you get those Saving Private Ryan moments all over the shop. Argonne Forest on the other hand is a much more linear map by design, it's got lush forests which look insane by the way, if you thought the Endor maps on Battlefront looked good, well this one definitely takes it up a notch. Way more detailing around the level, there's a train track running through the centre of the map as well which leaves some broken carriages for cover and there are various trenches around as well as a bunker area so if you want a trench map to fight on this one is pretty good. This could easily be the metro of Battlefield 1 because out of all of the maps it's definitely got the most linear flag design so I'm fully expecting this map to be the go to one where you want to grind out some XP but be careful though because the foliage really does make it hard to see enemies at times. Of course there's plenty more maps to choose from, we've got St Quentin Scar which we played in the alpha and then Sinai Desert which we played during the beta. I didn't actually get to play an updated version of Sinai Desert again so I can't say if any big changes have been made to it but I really hope that they have because I think it's definitely the worst map in the game. Ballroom Blitz may seem like a small infantry map on the face of it but it plays really well and there's a massive outdoor area to fight over. On operations this map really felt at home, moving between the indoor areas to the outdoor gardens and then progressing further to the train line. I felt so immersed playing it. It's also got an upper area surrounding the courtyard that makes it a sniper's paradise if they can get into the right position. One thing you have to admit though is that these maps look stunning. Empire's Edge is a perfect example, fighting over a fortified coast on the Adriatic. You've got boats available to you as well to loot behind the enemy and you find yourself fighting over ruins and even a fantastic looking castle. Then we've got Monte Grappa, a mountain set in the Venetian pre-alps of Italy. This one is very unique in the fact that the map is pretty separated between vehicles and infantry because of how steep the hill is. Tanks become pretty limited to the bottom half of the map and then infantry takes over the upper side, especially snipers. Foul Fortress and 
Suez were probably the two less standout maps for me. That's not to say that they played badly. I had a lot of fun on them, but some of the other maps just made more impact. So what about game modes? Well, we know that Conquest is in there, and we also know how it's been changed slightly. So kills now count towards the score. We've also got TDM, Rush, and Domination, which we're pretty familiar with. New to Battlefield 1, though, is Operations. And I have to say, it's the standout mode, and I think that most people will be playing Operations on a day-to-day -day basis. Essentially, it takes the best parts of Conquest, open, not linear areas with multiple routes, and Rush, controlling certain points to progress on a map, and it mashes them together. So when you start as attackers, you've got two points up ahead that you need to capture. Think of it a bit like Turning Point on Battlefront. You've got to then control both of these points, and then you'll progress to the next two or three. As it happens, if your team wins, you'll actually progress to the next map in the series. The way Operations is set up is that it's split into different, well, operations. It's kind of like a story with these narrative introductions. Oil of Empires, Conquer Hell, these are just two of the operations you can pick from, and they've got set maps that you can progress onto that fit into that theatre of war. The idea is that if a team wins, you progress to the next map. Don't worry if your team loses, though. You do get two more tries to attempt to win an attack. In fact, if you lose the first time, you get a behemoth the second time to try and secure a victory, which honestly sometimes can be a bit much on these maps because they're so focused. I find that on Conquest, the behemoths don't really have that much of an impact because the map is much larger and the players are spread out. But on Operations, because everyone's in this tight area, the behemoths can get a bit annoying at times and you will die again and again to them. Overall though, Operations is fantastic to the point where I don't see too many players playing normal Rush at all because, well, it's limited in player count and it just isn't as fun as playing a Rush Conquest combination on a much larger scale. Operations gets two thumbs up from me. And then of course we've got the other new game mode, War Pigeons. That's right, War Pigeons. We know that pigeons were really important during the war, so why not have a game mode based around them? It's pretty simple though, a random pigeon box will drop on the map and both teams have to fight over it. Each team must grab the box and by doing so they'll start writing a note. If you're holding the pigeon and are stationary, the note writes faster and if you move it writes much slower, so there are some tactics to be had and your team really needs to be defending you. When the note's finished, if you release the pigeon and if it escapes, you'll gain a point for your team. Now I say if because the enemy team has a small window where they can actually shoot the pigeon down and if they do so then you scoring that point will be prevented. You are visible on the map as well when you're writing your notes, so the enemy team will be coming for you. We noticed a small meta during our playtest where players were just throwing gas down wherever the pigeon was, and if it was released, the gas instantly killed the pigeon. Not ideal, so I hope that they've changed that for when the game fully releases. War Pigeons, you know, it's a bit of fun, but I don't see many people playing it on a regular basis. Next up, I want to talk about the balance. I know lots of people felt tanks were overpowered during the beta. Well, those guys will be glad to know that they've had a tweak They've had their ammo count dropped in most of the variants and, for example, the howitzer package has less turret movement now and it's restricted to around 45 degrees rather than 360 degrees, which it used to be. As well as that, the AT rocket gun is now way more effective against tanks and vehicles and you've got the full array of gadgets now to use, so dynamite, AT mines, limpet charges and the support also now has the support wrench to aid in repairing and damaging vehicles. In terms of the playable classes, I think time will tell how balanced they are after we get the full array of maps and weapons, but overall I felt like the assault weapons had their plays close up, and scout was still super effective at long ranges. Medic weapons also felt like they were a lot more effective up close than they were in the beta and seemed to pack more of a punch. Battlefield 1 really is about picking the weapon variants that work with your playstyle and you want to use. If you want to play longer ranges, then you'll go for a marksman variant, but if you want to play up close, then you can use hipfire a lot more and go with a trench variant. It's up to you to pick that playstyle. I personally found a nice balance of people playing each class as well. I'd say that the medic now has more of a purpose. Everyone loves scout anyway. Assault is just so important to take down vehicles and infantry play. And support, I think, is still a bit underused, even with the limpet mine anti-tank gadget. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the balance and the weapon balance and the gunplay. I think it's really good and I thoroughly enjoy it in Battlefield 1. And just to kind of throw in my favourites, there's a sniper for the scout class called the Martini Henry, which was definitely my favourite weapon in the game 
followed by the Howder Shotgun, which is a secondary weapon, kind of like a close-up, sawn-off shotgun thing. And both of those weapons are just absolute beast mode. There's some visual customization too. Each weapon has a number of visual skins that you can pick from, some more basic than others. Each is in keeping with the style of the game and the time period, so don't expect CSGO style weapon skins, but more like gold plating and authentic camo designs. They're quite tasteful. Some of them are unique to each weapon and some are used on various variants. What I didn't see was any player-based customization though, which is a shame, so I hope there is some of that down the line. I also imagine that there will be the option to have your emblem on your weapon at some point too perhaps engraved into it which would be really cool and i think it would still keep it authentic what don't i like well i do think the behemoths are still a bit overpowered in some circumstances as i said i guess that is the point of them but sometimes it really is just annoying and frustrating to get killed by them over and over for example the airship is insanely strong on a map like monte grappa because it's just so close to the ground although there is an upside to that because players in the gunner seats can be shot out relatively easily the Dreadnought was also pretty powerful on some of the sea base levels. Foul Fortress, for example, has a pretty wide open flag and being hit from the warship miles offshore when you can't exactly return fire wasn't very fun. I definitely think some fine tuning is needed there to get the balance right. I also noticed that the elite classes were available on War Pigeons. I just don't think that's needed. It's a small objective based game mode and I don't think it needs that super strong elite class there. And of course, when the game's released, I'm sure we'll see some lovely bugs, which hopefully get squashed and killed by the devs pretty quickly. So there we have it, my overall first impressions. It's still a Battlefield game. There aren't any massive innovations here, but it's big, it's cinematic, it's fun as hell. I love the setting, and I'll be playing the crap out of this game. There'll be plenty more footage out this week too, and I'll probably be streaming the Play First trial tomorrow, so if you want to tune in for some live gameplay, then you're more than welcome to come along. I hope you enjoyed the video guys give me a thumbs up if you did a thumbs down if you didn't that would be amazing thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one